Parks and Recreation Commission is live. Okay. I'd like to go ahead and call together the Parks Commission meeting of May 13th, 2020. I'm gonna go ahead and start the Pledge of Allegiance this evening. <clears throat> Hand over your heart, ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, is Ms. Gavitt on the call yet? If not, I'd like to go ahead and just take a roll call of the commissioners. If you can. Uh, oh. Can you hear me now? I'm here. Yes. Okay. Ms. Gavitt, are you on the call? Yes, I am. Okay, I was going to go ahead and take a roll call of the commissioners. So at this time of commissioners, you can unmute yourself and call yourself present. Vice uh, Commissioner Elizabeth McCreary. Here. Commissioner Joe Almasy. Here. Commissioner James Wood. Here. Commissioner Michelle Wentworth. Here. Okay, we are all present. To conduct meeting, uh, first, we would like to go ahead and approve the minutes for February 12, 2020 and March 11th, 2020. Before I receive a motion, though, let me go ahead and just read a few things. For the public participating telephonically, please dial star nine or press your raise the hand button if participating via the Zoom app to raise your hand so that we're aware that you have submitted a request of oral comment. You have one minute from this time of submission to your request. So we'll have just a moment here. If there's anybody on the call that would like to have any questions for the minutes, if not, Ms. Backus, have we received any oral comments via chat room? We have not received any oral comments. Okay. Ms. Gavin, have we received any written comments from the public? We have not received any written comments. Okay. So at this time, we will then go ahead and telephonic public participation is now closed for the minutes. May I have a motion from one of the commissioners, please? A motion to approve the min both minutes do we have to do that separately or, or the same, Christy? We actually have to do it separately because oh, McCreary was not present for February. Who was not present? Me. Uh, McCreary. <laughs> we would like to have someone else make that motion. Yeah, I'll make a motion that we yes. approve the minutes from the February 2019 meeting. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. All those in favor of the minutes for February 12, 2020, please acknowledge by saying aye. 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 Abstain. We have any abstentions or any no's? Commissioner McCurry abstains since she was not present. Can we have a motion for the minutes of March 11, 2020? I motion for the minutes of March 11, 2020. Do I have a second? Listed elsewhere on the agenda. Please note that state law prohibits the commission from discussing or taking action on any of these items. Please observe the three minute limit for communications. Once your call is connected, we request that you state your name again for the city and residents for record. For public participating telephonically, please dial star nine or press the raise hand button on your participating Zoom app to raise your hand so that we know and are aware that you have submitted your request for oral comment. I will give at least a one minute warning before the request period is closed. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue. At this time, we will go ahead and have the youth update. So for those two the youths, if you'd like to come on, Unmute yourself and give your report, please, at this time. Good evening, my name is Joshua De Naros, and I am the Mayor's Youth Council intern. 
The Riverside County health officials are encouraging young people to get tested for coronavirus because it is believed the group has been underrepresented in testing so far. More than 71,000 people have been tested in Riverside County at the county and state run testing sites, clinics, hospitals, and private facilities. And health officials say it is important that all segments of the population get tested to help determine the spread of coronavirus in the community. While adults have been well represented in testing, officials said they would like more, more of those 25 and younger to be screened. According to the census data, those 18 and under make up about 25% of Riverside County's population. But that group must has made up only 6.6% of the testing appointments at the county's coronavirus testing sites. The county currently operates four drive drive up testing sites in Indio, Paris, Riverside, and Lake Elsinore. And those who want to be screened do not have to have symptoms, although they, although they do need an appointment. Parent permission is required for testing of minors. For an appointment, Call 800-945-6171. Appointments are also required at the eight state operated walk-up testing sites spread throughout the county. To make an appointment at the state sites, go online, click https colon backslash backslash lhi.care slash COVID testing. Or for those without internet access, call 888-634 one, one, two, three. Testing is for everyone regardless of immigration status or insurance, and it is free. Testing has been expanded to be available for those with and without symptoms. And we encourage our young people to get themselves tested at one of the many testing sites. There is no cost to the person being tested at either the county or state operated facilities. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hi everyone, my name is Tree Reddy and I'm also with the Mayor's Youth Council today. And first of all, I would just like to thank the city for taking extra precautions to keep all of our citizens safe. And I really, I'll, I think I can speak for the youth of Corona and thanking the city for what they have done to take our, um, take our concerns into consideration, whether it be through the surveys online or connecting with us through other platforms. We're really grateful for the support as we understand it's, we're all in a very challenging time right now. And another thing that I'd like to bring attention to is one of, is a youth run organization that some of our youth have been putting on in these last few weeks. So last week on NBCLA, an organization actually started by me, but it's been, it involves a lot of students in CNUSD. It was featured on NBCLA. It's called Go To Tutors, which is a free online one-on-one -on -one tutoring service where we tutor students mostly throughout CNUSD, but we've expanded to um, San Diego, all over Los Angeles County, especially after our run on NBCLA. And we mostly involve high school and college students in our area. They get community service hours for doing it, and it's just a really great way to involve the community. So I'm on here just to spread awareness about this amazing organization and hopefully the city could help us in spreading awareness as well. Thank you very much, that was great. Thanks. Are there any comments uh, from any of the commissioners before we move forward or I ask the public to comment? Um, I, have, I had oh. a question, um, Ms. Reddy, or, um, can you name the tutoring organization one more time? Yeah, it's called GoToTutors. Our website is gototutors.org and you can connect with us both on Facebook and on Instagram at gototutors. Okay, I know that you had requested, um, you know, our help getting the word out about that organization and I'm happy to spread the word as a parent, uh, kids mm -hmm. in school, who, and yeah. we're now the teachers. We yeah. love that there's uh, <laughs> people out there willing to help. So I will definitely get the word out. Thank you so much. And Mr. Daenerys, thank you for your update and encouraging the youth of our community to be tested. Thank you both for coming this evening. Thank you. A real quick thank question, you. Shree. How many people have been involved in this? What are your What's your count right now? How many right now, yeah, right, right now we're at 30 tutors on our website, but we have 46 requests. 
um, from students from Centennial High School, Eleanor Roosevelt High School, and Santiago High School, which is actually where I'm from. And we've tutored so far students from all around our area. I think we just finished our 20th session today and we started two weeks ago, but we're definitely, we have a lot more requests going on. So I expect to see a lot more in the next few weeks. Congratulations. That's a really, really neat thing. I know that my grandson is being inundated by his teacher and I know that sometimes it doesn't, kids don't have the support at home mm -hmm. that they yeah. need. So having a tutors available will really, really enhance their learning capacity. I, I, and I appreciate what you're doing. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Josh, also, I think what you're doing in this time of trouble is uh, really, really helping us. Um, keep up the good work and get get your get those high points out to the community so we can get everybody tested, especially the young kids. Congratulations on that as well. Thank you, sir. Ms. Backus, do we have any oral comments for the Youth Council? Ms. Gavin, do we have any written comments? There are no written comments, and I do not believe there are any there are oral comments as well. Okay. Okay. All right. Before we get into our reports for the evening, again, I need to just remind the public that is participating telephonically to please dial star nine and press the raise your hand button. If participating via the Zoom app, please raise your hand so that we're aware that you have submitted a request for oral comment. And then you'll have one minute from now to submit your request. So at this time, if we could have Tom Moody from the DWP, go ahead and present his report. Good evening, commissioners. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, it's good to see everybody and touch base. Um, I'm going to be sharing a presentation tonight. Just want to make sure everybody can see that. Um, this is the April Parks update going over some of our numbers. Um, during the month of April, we've had 427 tree trims and we've uh, done some of the removals, about 271 inches of tree removal. This is on top of our <clears throat> um, program that we are working on in relation to our tree grant, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, we continue with graffiti removal services, and this, is, uh, this time has actually been very helpful for us. Uh, just prior to um, everybody going into uh, shutdown mode, we uh, were being inundated with graffiti uh, all throughout town. Um, we've seen quite a bit of success in accomplishing and removing that graffiti, um, and uh, we continue to attack that as it pops up. But it has provided a nice reprieve with everybody being closed up, so that's one of the good positive uh, outcomes of the stay-at-home order. Uh, city park cleanup. So we had a city park cleanup. Um, the, uh, you'll notice that these trucks and uh, this looks like it's internal. This is actually internal to the uh, armory. So the armory was broken into um, and it required us to actually pull our trucks in and, and remove that debris. Uh, we have a bobcat in there and uh, there was quite a bit of activity inside of there. So uh, that's proved a, a bit challenging. Uh, we've done some power washing of shelters and restrooms, and we did some detailed landscape of City Park uh, as well during this cleanup process. Uh, parks and trails updates. Um, as you all know, we did have to close those down in compliance with the county orders, and we took that opportunity um, to address some issues. Um, picnic shelters, again, were, were pressure washed and cleaned. Um, Skyline Trail is now open with the uh, notice of social distancing. Uh, tennis and pickleball courts are reopened with a social distancing. I'm proud to say I did see some tennis players coming off of uh, the uh, Kellogg Park uh, the other night on my walk. So things are being used, which is good. Um, picnic shelters, restrooms, playgrounds, basketball courts still remain closed. Um, and those will remain closed until um, some of the other phase two items are, are managed. Um, as these get a lot of use, it would require quite a bit of, of 
support in making sure that they were cleaned and wiped down. Um, and so we're not sure what that duration is and we have not made any determinations on when those will be reopened. Summer field renovations to begin in June. Soccer field aeration, fertilization, turf. Uh, this is where we're gonna level and drag the fields, ball fields, and, and we'll do some of that prep. Um, again, we still haven't made any determinations or come to any conclusions on what uh, sports leagues and other activities are gonna look like or when those items are going to be resuming. As we get more information on that, we do plan to, uh, we will share that as future updates. Recreation uh, will probably be taking some of that lead as they will have uh, more information in regards to the timing of those activities. Tree grant update. So we've removed 36 trees so far, um, and this is where we're going to be taking out about 2,000 inches, um, and we're trying to uh, refresh some of that urban renewal, and then we will be doing planting. So during this time, we will actually be taking a lot of the trees out, and then we will, um, as, the, as the notice states, we will be replanting two trees for every tree removed. And then the first set of plantings will begin to take place in the fall. And that's really for plant establishment. It doesn't do a lot of good to plant a tree um, in the middle of summer when the heat is the hottest. So we will be taking them out during the next few months, during the summer months. And then we'll, we, we will begin transitioning into planting in the beginning of fall. That concludes my report, unless there are any questions. Do we have any oral comments? We do not have any oral comments. Do we have any written comments? We do not have any written comments. Okay, then let us go ahead and proceed with the Library and Recreational Services update. All right, so the, <clears throat> excuse me, um, evening commissioners. Uh, so the, the first item that we uh, have for discussion uh, is an administrative policy, which has been drafted uh, in response um, to council's direction to involve the Parks and Recreation Commission uh, in recommending use of general fund park fees. This would be related uh, to bond repayment uh, development impact fees uh, funds. So let me see if I can share that draft with you. Um, where is that? Okay, it's not gonna let me do that, come on. Where'd you go? Right. Is anybody seeing that? No, of course no, not. We don't see anything. That, that would be too easy. <laughs> oh, man, why are we not showing the here? Dad committed. All right, well, apparently it's not going to be there. It, it's in the agenda. Hopefully you've all received um, that draft. Has, has everybody received the, the draft um, policy? Hopefully you have. Okay, so let's just sort of walk through it. It's uh, it really the first page is is uh, only um, it's sort of you know essential verbiage stuff. Uh, the real meat of that is on page two. Uh, so if, uh, we can take a look at section three point one. It really is three parts. Um, the first is that uh, when council established resolution 2019-84, which was last September, uh, they basically redirected. Um, the repayment of the bond that, it, that was issued um, more than a decade ago, uh, they determined that rather than simply moving the monies into general funds for general use, they uh, want them specifically set aside in a, a fund uh, that will handle uh, both maintenance and improvement projects. So both of those are included. Um, so there are sort of, again, three points to that. The first is that at the end of every fiscal year, whatever uh, DIF monies have come back in uh, towards bond repayment, and if you look uh, in your packet this evening, uh, you will see Ms. Sitton has provided another update for you, and there's almost $400,000 uh, to date sitting in that uh, account, though that figure can change between now and the end of the year. But at the end of every fiscal year, those funds are to be moved uh, 
uh, into a specific account uh, for the purpose of being used for maintenance or upgrades uh, to park uh, and or recreation facilities. Um, part two, and this is our obligation, is that as part of the budgetary process, we are required to put together a list of projects that we would use those funds for and bring them to the, to the commission prior to the council ever seeing so that you can uh, provide some input, uh, have a discussion about each of those projects, and then recommend those things that you think make sense. Uh, a really important part of that is that anything that we would propose would be, and this I think is consistent with um, the desire of this commission, is that the projects would be um, directly connected to a guiding document. So all of you are, are well aware that we're currently uh, underway with the facility assessment. Uh, at some point, we anticipate that that will transition to a master plan. So in any event, we want to make sure uh, that whatever projects are proposed are connected to one or the other of those guiding documents. Uh, and then finally, again, uh, that those would come to you uh, for review, for discussion, uh, prior to those uh, being presented to council as part of the normal budgetary process. Uh, that really concludes my report, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Oh, there it is. Tom found it. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Do any of the commissioners have any questions for Mr. Montgomery Scott? Are the Okay, I do, sorry. Um, is this document, this is the draft and this will be going to council at the next meeting? Correct. Okay. Um, I didn't see anything glaring. I think it covered everything that I had hoped for, including the mention of connecting your projects to a guiding document so that we have fair prioritization of what we were going to do. And it didn't just come down to um, particular future commissioners, you know, kind of pet project idea. So I think that's key. I'm glad that's in there. Um, I do still hesitate on using the money for maintenance issues because that's there's no way to back up putting new things into parks if you're going to spend your money on maintenance. So I, I um, my only hesitation is would be um, hopefully future commissions will work towards maybe a percentage or a balance for that. But um, hopefully that will be in the guiding document too. But other than that, I would recommend um, this document moving forward as is. That concludes my comments. Any other comments, commissioners? Are there any public comments or written comments? There are no oral comments. There are no written comments. Okay, then we will go ahead and continue with the next report. Actually, be, before we do that, uh, Mr. Miller, if, if we can get a formal motion by the commission to recommend approval of this uh, document to the city council at its next meeting. Okay. If I can have a motion from one of the commissioners to accept this document. I will move to accept the document. I have one, a quick, one quick question. You have draft on there. By us making this recommendation, the draft will come off, David? Uh, well, it, it will go to um, the council as a draft as well. What you're okay. recommending is approval of this draft. And if they have any recommended changes, um, then we'll make those changes. If not, then draft comes off. Will it come back to us once they make the changes? Uh, if there are changes, we will absolutely bring back any finished document to you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Motion. Okay. So we had a motion by Commissioner Wentworth and seconded by Commissioner McCrary. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? So moved.
Ms. Lenny, if you'd like to go ahead and continue with the report from the Libraries and Recreation Department. Thank you. So um, Alex is going to show that for us on the screen. What we're going to do is give you an update on our COVID impact. So um, good evening, everybody. Jason and I are going to walk you through library and recreations activities since the stay at home orders began March 19th and also how the department is going to is planning phases to return to regular operations. Next slide. So with the stay at home orders in place. Library and recreation staff were sent home. As you can see, our last day of operations was March 19th, or that might've been the first day that we were actually um, home. Initially, parks were closed and all activities, programs canceled or postponed. We also are all working remotely for the most part, but we'll get into some details about that in the, in the coming slides. Also, our volunteers were also sent home. Next slide. So we do have a remote team that has been working. This is an outline of those numbers. We have 17 full-time staff all working remotely in some capacity on different projects. We have 59 part-time staff. They're working in different um, manners. You can see some of the types of jobs that are listed there. We do have about half of our staff who we have not been able to assign something. There's just not work to do or they have chosen to opt out for whatever personal reason they may have with their family and, and making sure they're safe. And then at this time, we haven't talked about any furloughs or layoffs. Um, coordinating with other city departments, we have been able to bring projects to the fore that have been on the back burner. And we've also developed a virtual service area online that, and that has been how we've been able to put our team to work and we'll share some of those assignments in the next slide. So the first part of this list is largely the, well, it's about half and half, library and um, recreation. We necessarily have expanded our virtual presence, and that means also clearing the way for our community to meet us there. We ensured existing card holders had cards that were free of any restrictions to access our email, media and online resources. And for safety of staff, we did close access to the book drops. They're actually shrink wrapped, but also pushed due dates out and deactivated the accumulation of any fees during this time. An e-card has also been made available to our patrons so they can register online to access our e-media and premium digital content. The LARS Where You Are, we're calling it Read, Play, Learn. That is our department's virtual presence. It started its life as a subpage of the city's COVID-19 pages, which you can find on coronaca.gov. We will continue to add to this content and move it to the library and services pages for a grand opening that we hope to do the first week of June for that new content. Content will include streaming story times, contract class demos, and a variety of enrichment for all ages. And we are sharing all of this content as we create new content and have new services to provide virtually. We are sharing that on our Facebook, on our Instagram and our Twitter. And so if you are following that, we post something new once or twice a day to our recreation page, to our library page in social media. And so we hope you're visiting that. If you haven't been already, please share it with great abandon so that everybody sees some of the resources we have. And then uh, with recreation, I just wanted to add that um, we have done a lot of work with the community. Um, we've had a number of refunds to process for all of our different types of programs. Um, we've had to do rescheduling of uh, facility use permits, uh, both indoors and outdoors. And then we're still continuing to uh, kind of stage our programs uh, for their comeback, understanding that we don't necessarily know what that's going to look like just yet. Um, so kind of finding a scale of, you know, what that'll look like. Um, and, you know, just being sympathetic um, to the understanding that we're really working with moving targets here. Okay, next slide. So with the citywide COVID-19, we have been part of response assistance in a variety of manners. 
with the activation of the city's emergency operations center or EOC, a COVID-19 info line was established. These 19 staff, all of whom are library and recreation service staff, respond to inquiries via phone, via email, and via SMS. In addition to fielding over 600 inquiries, and that's probably actually closer to 700 now since I wrote this up, during the course of the operation, these staff have developed guides to community resources, which are shared via the InfoLine and incorporated into our online resources. The InfoLine currently operates at 24 hours, seven hours, uh, seven days a week. We are going to be shifting to a 12 hour, seven day a week operation starting on Friday. As the care and shelter branch for the EOC, we are also responding to those in need during this time and coordinating donations and resources so people can connect to those things. Um, wh whoever may be, whether they're a vulnerable population, maybe as we know, many people are out of work and, and need access to things like uh, food pantry assistance and maybe picking up um, prescriptions and things like that. So there's many great people in the community here offering wonderful services. And we're trying to connect all of them through our care and shelter branch. All right, and then uh, since uh, Recreation has an army of uh, part-time staff, we've been able to assign our team members in uh, new and interesting ways. Uh, we have opened a phone assurance line for our senior center participants uh, so we can check in on them, provide a friendly little social outlet there, and also um, resource and referral um, as needed. Um, additionally, in lieu of the city expanding our janitorial contract, uh, we have been able to move uh, several of our part-time uh, team uh, to a day porter program. Uh, where we help sanitize essential facilities, uh, including certain areas of uh, city hall, uh, police, and uh, fire. And this has actually been great because uh, it saved us from having to, um, you know, add to our existing contract or go out for additional services. And we've had some other odd jobs uh, too, including um, helping other departments catch up on remote office work, uh, twice weekly uh, park monitoring, and even an alley uh, cleanup project that uh, lasted several days. So while this might not be as much fun as our normal work, um, it certainly helps uh, those uh, out uh, who need the hours, as well as making sure that our services are still being rendered to the community. Okay, next slide. So reopening, this is one of those TBD is everywhere to be determined what date, what those services will look like. We are following the pattern that the state's using, uh, everyone talks about phases. And so that is how we have been looking at our return. We're essentially at a phase zero with all virtual programming right now. What we hope to do next is phase into a curbside where people can, for example, put an item on hold, we check it out for them, schedule time for them to pick up those books, and then they get them from the exterior of the building with all the necessary safety precautions in mind. Once we are able to go back to our facilities, even if the public isn't there yet, we're hoping to create some, or we're planning to create some more original content that we can share with our community. And gradually, it's essentially working backwards the direction we came from, from full access to, or from no access right now, working towards the timeline of being able to allow the public back in and for us to interact with them. And it, as everyone knows, there's no real timeline to this. So um, we're gonna do it carefully and thoughtfully and always in coordination with our safety manager with the city and with our city management and council. And next slide. And so some more details about what is going on. That's our little transition slide. Okay, so I mentioned some curbside material circulation we um, will include print material and AV circulation. When June begins, we will kick off our summer reading challenge like we always do. The theme this year is dig deeper, read, investigate, discover. We already utilize an online registration platform for our summer reading program. So our community will still be able to access that online and we'll do everything we can to make that accessible to everyone, even if they don't have resources at home to get to that. Um, I also mentioned, Lars, where you are earlier. This will be a launch point for live streaming story times. Jason will provide some updates on recreation areas of service and all of our service areas will have some form of representation in our virtual content. As we phase through we, our reopening, Lars, where you are, will remain a part of what we offer, but will likely become a smaller and smaller portion of what we offer as we're able to see people in person more 
on a more regular basis. As the library, we've also shifted a portion of our funding to our digital content, just because our print stuff isn't available right now. So we wanna make sure that our e-media collection is robust. Um, and finally, the staff training, we, there's always a little bit of a silver lining. We've been able to participate and um, catch up on safety training and all kinds of training opportunities that are being offered virtually. Many companies are doing this for free right now because they know everyone is at home trying to make it through this time. So we, it, is, it has been a good opportunity to catch up on things like that. Okay, next slide. So with recreation, um, we're trying to uh, keep our options uh, with several solutions depending on where we fall within those uh, four phases there. Um, with Adventure Camp, we are hoping activities uh, will fall within that phase two um, under child care options and one, be one of our first programs to open. Um, if not, we're looking at some uh, take home options uh, since we have the supplies ready to go. Uh, aquatics is highly impacted uh, throughout the state. Uh, many cities have canceled their programs altogether, uh, but we are still holding out hope uh, that we can operate in a reduced capacity um, with a semi-private uh, group lesson um, expansion. Uh, this would uh, go into the later evening, um, smaller classes, and be at a reduced cost um, from what we would regularly charge for it. Um, we are in communication with cities uh, that have canceled the programs to see if we can pick up some of their staff. Uh, we also realize a number of families may have their own uh, pools, uh, but won't be able to participate or skipping uh, classes this year for their own personal reasons. Uh, and for them, we are working with the Red Cross uh, to see about uh, online water safety class uh, for the community. And we're also gonna be posting some uh, fun items on social media uh, for May's uh, Water Safety Month. Uh, our classes, uh, we're looking at doing maybe some smaller programs, uh, more outside uh, offerings, and then uh, exploring more of uh, the digital uh, forefront of um, online instruction and what we can do there. Parks, fields, and facility use uh, really just depend on what we can offer in terms of larger assemblies and open space. Uh, many of our field users are having their own dialogue about how they will uh, handle their season. Uh, but in the meantime, we're still giving them the same tools that we would uh, this time of the year uh, to start requesting uh, their field allocations, assuming, you know, everything's okay and we can go full steam ahead. This is what it would look like. Um, our senior center uh, reopening will be contingent upon the safety of our older adults. Um, this is a sensitive population and we want to be mindful of that. Um, but we are still looking at uh, doing more continued uh, resource in the resource or referral area and making sure we're staying in contact with those participants that uh, maybe aren't able to join us in person just yet. And then with our city hosted uh, youth and adult sports, Again, just a matter of what we can do. Uh, we're looking at maybe some smaller uh, programs, uh, maybe like three on three, um, or you know, less contact through skills and drills types programs. All right, so next slide is a pretty loaded one here. Um, so last week we took an overview of our planned summer community events to the Council Public Services Committee for a very difficult recommendation. Um, while we were able to secure a, a new fireworks operator for Saturday, yes, Saturday, July 4th, and our team seriously worked our butts off here. Um, I don't think anyone anticipated uh, a pandemic would come and derail our efforts uh, here. Um, while our team has uh, continued to optimistically plan, um, we're at the point now where we have a lack of sponsors coming through. Uh, Monster Energy actually pulled their stage uh, use and they're gonna be pulling all sponsorships uh, from throughout the area. Um, our vendor costs are creeping up amidst the crisis. And, um, you know, sitting here a few weeks out, we still just don't know what the Fed, state, or county are going to call in terms of larger assemblies. In fact, many large events are uh, canceled. We're hearing about county fairs, and I was just reading online, you know, a Hollywood Bowl, um, you know, time honored summer tradition is canceling uh, their summer season. Um, this, you know, really, really hard times here. Um, I am proud to say that Corona Rotary came through in a major way uh, with full support of uh, the parade. Um, their dedication is certainly noticed and appreciated. We could not do this event without them. Still, um, based on the current circumstances and out of uh, continued concern for the health and safety of our residents, staff do have to recommend the cancellation of the fourth uh, parade, fireworks, and also our summer concerts. Um, so we're still continuing to explore other options for community, um, such as um, home decor.
creating contests, maybe a virtual parade and other digital content. We realize this is not the same as the time honored tradition, uh, but you know, we want to have some symbols of hope uh, and patriotism um, as we move forward um, in our season here. And we look forward uh, to being able to do our 4th of July again next year. We're not canceling the event by any means or anything like that. We just can't do it this year. Um, so since that meeting, um, we have taken to social media uh, for resident feedback. Uh, many were disappointed by the news and very vocal in their comments. Um, we are very fortunate that the community feels so passionately about this uh, event, and I can't wait until we can all to get to celebrate together soon. Um, last I reviewed, uh, we did receive 114 responses uh, to the survey. Um, not st necessarily statistically uh, valid, but very insightful. Um, our most popular considerations were uh, a home and business decorating uh, contest, uh, Yankee Doodle Dog or Pet uh, contest, uh, the virtual parade, uh, short form digital content and a virtual talent showcase. Um, we also had some interesting write-in options and I'll quickly read through these just because they're kind of fun. Uh, virtual fireworks show, Veterans Day event, citywide block party where everyone can kind of celebrate on their own lawns, uh, reverse parade where uh, community and or service vehicles go throughout town, uh, city giveaways, uh, gifts or swag dropped off at uh, random homes or in public places, uh, video submissions, um, maybe a competition between the high school, uh, or high schools, I should say, with prizes. Uh, cooking contest, uh, decorating the city with flags and lights like Christmas, uh, flyover with red, white, and blue smoke. Uh, using the holiday to do something um, kind uh, for our community, uh, perhaps a homeless uh, support services event. Uh, kids art contest, light show with drones, uh, scavenger hunt, and uh, my favorite here, a virtual dance off. So lots of great creativity here from our community. Mm -hmm. So at this point, we are working with the city's communication team, or sorry, we are working with the city's communication team on uh, what we can execute. So there's a lot of technical elements that go into this, and we want to highlight what makes our community so great. Uh, we're also looking at launching some of these ideas in June and then uh, showcasing them throughout the week of the four with some uh, extra special uh, attention given to the holiday itself. So we're hoping maybe a couple of our commissioners might even help us out. Uh, we'll need to do some uh, digital media elements uh, and we're also going to perhaps uh, need some judges uh, if we go into the home and business decorating. Okay, we just have one more slide. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> thanks for sticking with us. We have a lot to, to share with y'all. So we are doing everything we can to engage with each other, even though we're all working in different spots to engage with the community in any way we can, whether it's through our, we, we did manage to put out a Lars Insider pointing people to our virtual content. And our staff are also taking the opportunity to engage with other organizations, with professional organizations. None of us have dealt with this before, so we're all trying to share what we're developing, what seems to be working well, and what we hope will work well, um, following recommended guidelines for keeping staff safe, for keeping the community safe, and for still keeping everyone involved. And that's really our goal. That's why we all went into library and recreation services is because we love to help our community and be with our community. And we're all really missing it. So. We are looking forward to when we can all hang out together again. Um, but that does conclude our report. And that was a lot of information to share with all of you. So um, if there's any questions, any comments? Yes, I, it's here, I, have but a few, I have a few comments. I'd like to, uh, suggestions and comments. Um, in regards to libraries, over the summer, how about, uh, is there anything about maybe a virtual story time? There absolutely is, Chris. We are doing both. We've been recording some. And what we want to do once we're on site is also stream some live ones. Okay. And we've been talking with IT about making sure our line is secure and that we will be able to engage in, in real time with, with our community. Okay. Um, also, in regards to, I don't know if this would be recreational or libraries, but maybe perhaps some having a virtual scavenger hunt where the kids are actually stuck in their house, but there's items that they need to find 
and bring forward and maybe we can give them credits for library credits like you do the reading program mm -hmm. but maybe a, a virtual scavenger hunt within the home or in their yard or something like that that's a great idea thank you chris um also how about like e-gaming can we do anything on the recreational side about with computers or e-gaming or at least connecting students that do a lot of e-gaming since kids are at home now uh, having competitions through recreations with gaming uh, that's a, that's i'm just trying to th talk things out here yeah commissioner Another miller um yes i can answer that um the california park and recreation society has been having um talks uh weekly on different types of content and things we can do for our community uh esports is definitely a hot topic right now uh, a lot of people are getting really good because <laughs> yeah. they're at home playing uh so i'm trying to learn a little bit more about what exactly that means and you know if that's something uh the city would be interested in hosting um, there's a lot of different control measures, um, as well as uh, sportsmanship uh, things involving, you know, also we have to consider, you know, minors being online or on video um, and what those legal you know, ramifications might be. So uh, with a lot of the online digital content, um, it's a little bit of a wild west. So we're trying to figure out what that is, uh, making sure we're doing what's legal, what's responsible, uh, but still trying to be progressive and kind of, uh, you know, edgy where we can be for uh, a city entity. Great. Uh, one one last suggestion, maybe for Fourth of July, is doing a, a chalk art. You know, I've seen a lot of chalk art walking the neighborhoods, and maybe if they do a chalk art display in their neighborhoods, and then they somehow submit their chalk art, and then we can go judge some chalk art around town. Because that's been a real I, big I thing in my it. neighborhood. Walking around, I see chalk art everywhere. Yeah, I love seeing the positive messages around town. Yeah. Those are really cool. Yeah. So those are just some of my uh, thoughts and suggestions of, of uh, adding to what you guys did. Great job in trying to keep things moving forward. Uh, we, uh, we appreciate all the things that you guys just had to do and make all the adjustments you've had to do at this time, too. So other commissioners, go ahead and come forward at this time. Um, I have a lot of notes written down. Thank you guys so much for your work. And I know it's not easy trying to take something that's an in-person service and trying to make it digital and I appreciate all of your hard work and innovation on that. Um, I've written lots of notes to share. Um, I'm involved in a lot of moms clubs and um, different Facebook groups that are for moms of Corona. So I love getting this information and I try and get it out there, try and let people know the different services. So I, I really appreciate that. Appreciate that. And that's what encouraged me to actually apply to be on the commission in the first place. Um, with regards to the 4th of July, um, I got a comment from a city resident, Megan Smith, who asked um, or suggested that is, would there be a way with a house or business decorating contest for those residents or businesses to submit their address in some way? And the city could put together like dots on a map so that we could do like your own self tour of all of the residences and businesses around town that are decorated. You can even have two separate ones. Like, is it daytime decorated or is it lit for nighttime decorating and some kind of, um, basically her comment and which I thought was a great idea was to, um, make it digital so that you can go on a tour instead of just randomly driving your city. You can actually find these residents who really put forth the effort into their house. Um, so I don't even know if that's possible. Um, my next one was, um, is it even remotely possible to, instead of having a 4th of July parade, have a Veterans Day parade? I guess the answer is, at its most basic, I don't know, because I don't know, you know, we don't know what the, what the restrictions are going to be, you know, by the end of the year. And so, you know, it, I don't know that we'd want to say no to it, but um, it's definitely something I think that should be kept on, on, in our awareness. But I also just having no idea what the timeline will be, why I, I would fear would be in the same situation that we've been with 4th of July. Um, um, what do you I'll think? Just quickly, I'll just quickly comment too. So um, with the recommendation of public services, um, they are absorbing those funds for the fiscal year. 
Um, if the community really feels something passionately about like a Veterans Day type event uh, or something like that, it's just a matter of um, putting together a cost proposal, kind of uh, itemizing out, you know, what aspects of that will be, um, and then bringing that forward um, to our public services um, committee there. Um, you know, a lot goes into planning these events. Um, you know, 4th of July, you know, as soon as one's done, we're planning that next one. Um, right now we are still planning for, uh, you know, Hall Weekend. Uh, and then we also have um, the Wall That Heals um, coming to our community uh, in October too. So October is shaping up to be a pretty busy, busy event. Not quite as uh, patriotic uh, there, you know, with like the fireworks and everything. But, you know, if this is something we feel passionately about, we can always look into, you know, more about what that might be. Um, and then I did hear that first question there um, regarding the home decorating contest. Um, I just wanted to chime in uh, that I did uh, speak with uh, communications um, and they feel like our GIS uh, department could potentially uh, do something where we would have fixed map points um, where we could put a map up on uh, the city's uh, website. So, you know, maybe we have our top entries, you know, maybe we have all of them. Um, this is nothing we've never done before, so we don't quite know what it'll look like. Um, we have looked at some other cities and what they are doing. Um, a lot of cities do holiday decorating um, as kind of a, a go-to thing, uh, but we have seen those GIS maps uh, where they do either the featured uh, homes, like these are the top three for each category or all entries, uh, but we are a very large community. So if everyone's really into this, uh, we could get a lot. So it's just a matter of you know trying to streamline it and um, we want to bring quality to anything we do. I totally understand. And I um, love that you've already looked into the mapping of it. Um, that's exciting. And I know you mentioned earlier um, wanting volunteers. I would love to volunteer. It's my favorite holiday. So whatever you need for me, let me know. Um, and then I guess for the the reason I had recommended the Veterans Day Parade is, you know, there's a, there is a lot of, of course, disappointment in the cancellation of our our patriotic holiday, our our USA Pride holiday and Veterans Day has that component to it as well. And so I, I, I like to always hold on to hope. I have to have hope in order to stay sane as a parent that schools will someday reopen. But <laughs> with regards to this, um, you know, I, I, um, it might give some the people like, okay, we can't have our 4th of July parade, but you know, if things reopen, we might be able to celebrate, you know, our, our, patriotism with a veterans day parade or just something and it would be scaled down and but i i just like the idea of having some kind of patriotic holiday to look forward to um sooner than next year for the residents and oh and last question sorry um you mentioned the adventure camp and that you were hoping that it could be reopened as a childcare service since that's considered essential. I've had a lot of comments about this. A lot of jobs are reopening. A lot of parents still can't go to their jobs that are reopening because we all still have our kids at home. When are we thinking a decision will be made on whether or not Adventure Camp will reopen? Well, that again, this kind yeah. of falls in that, uh, you know, TBD uh, category. We're just, we're, we're waiting. We're ready to go. Um, we just need that green light from the county. Um, yeah, we ha oh, sorry, Jason. Go ahead. It was, that goes along with the phased planning that I mentioned earlier. Each phase, we know what's going to go in that more or less. It's just a matter of being told, okay, you're okay to move forward with groups of X amount, and then we can start to put into place how that's going to look. But the adventure camp will—you guys are qualifying it as a childcare service versus a school. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. So uh, traditionally, parents do rely on this as a childcare type service uh, during the school break. Um, we intentionally plan it to coincide with the CN uh, USD. Uh, summer schedule. Um, so as soon as, um, you know, they let out over there, we open up our camp doors. Um, you see all those kids out there having this a great time. And, you know, it pains me right now because, you know, I'm at home right now. Um, this is not really a park. Um, but, um, you know, regularly we'd be able to look out our office windows and to see everyone having a blast. Um, so I'm, I'm really hoping we're going to get there soon. Okay. 
Perfect. Well, thank you guys so much for the updates. And I guess I just ask if some if a change in these things um, happen between this month's meeting and next month's meeting, I would love a personal email being like, hey, here's a date for you, Elizabeth, <laughs> so that I could uh, start getting that word out. I know a lot of parents are hurting. Yeah, and absolutely. We're getting calls every day asking when folks can register for all the activities. Um, yeah. As soon as we're ready to go, you know, we can get people signed up um, for, for amazing programs. Perfect. Thank you. Abby, I just have a question for you. I know you're always looking for new things to do. Um, right now, with all the kids home and the parents still home, cooking has become a very, very big thing for the kids. Mm -hmm. It would be really cool if we could come up with a program that would be like a virtual cookbook or a recipe manual or even a cultural thing that the kids, and it would all focus through you guys putting something together, and then we would have a Corona, City of Corona cookbook at the end of this and how we survived the, the pandemic. Okay, you know what? We've even talked about uh, working with seniors and getting some of their favorite recipes and putting a cookbook, a senior center cookbook together. Um, we've talked about doing demos from home. Uh, you know, here, here I am baking biscuits or whatever, you know. And uh, so we're right on the same wavelength with that. So. I was thinking that maybe what we could do is maybe reach out to what, like the food network or something like that and tell them this is what we want to do. And maybe we could get some personality to come in to market this that would make, make it even better. Oh, cool idea. This isn't enough. This. Well, you know, you guys are, you guys are underworked. You guys are underworked. That's a lot of personality. You're underworked because you got all these things that you're still doing, but you're always looking for more. So I don't know when you're going to cut yourselves off. So. <laughs> but I'm just looking for things that would get the community yeah. involved with the library after the pandemic. Mm -hmm. the things what are, you know, the marketability right now is really, really hard. And this is something that could possibly be a marketing tool for you guys. Yeah. Thank you. I had a question and a couple of suggestions. Do we have any opportunity to offer like a small cash prize or gift card prize to like, the winners of the house decorating contest. Um, and I, I like the idea of the virtual tour of the houses so you can get online and see what everybody did because we are so spread out as a city. It's a little hard driving. I mean, we're known for the Christmas decorations on Candy Cane Lane, but I don't see like um, that for 4th of July, that'd be pretty difficult. So um, I think that, and I think kids, you know, kids are really into doing those TikTok videos. So to have kids do TikTok type video and you gave them a small gift card would really motivate them to do something fun or funny with their siblings. And you could virtually, I mean, you guys could string that all together. So it'd be like a vine maybe. What if you had a vine that totally took off? I mean, that would be something. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, the other thing I thought of was if we had a baby, uh, patriotic baby picture contest so that, you know, parents are submitting cute pictures of their babies or toddlers. And then, um, you know, that can be something that you give a small cash prize to or something. But thanks for your good work. I know that it's, it's really disappointing that we can't do things as usual, but I, I like how you're making up the difference. Mr. Wentworth, thank you so much for those ideas. And that's very much in line with what we're going for. We really just want that kind of sense of optimism, that celebration of the holiday, and you know that sense of fun uh, that we would all be having out there in person. Um, we do have some options um, for um, some gifts. So um, we do have a donation account. Um, as we get ready to launch some of these, um, there's also gonna be an opportunity for um, businesses um, or community members to, to give back um, or if some of our sponsors who have um, previously pledged uh, would like to get involved um, we can certainly do that um, you know we're trying to you know kind of think of fun incentives uh, to engage and uh, encourage people to be a part of all this yeah um, i know you all put a lot of hard work into these events and they're amazing and i'm thinking about this year as everyone already said barbecue and food and those recipe submittals and even people submitting the videos of them making the food and the videos of them eating and enjoying the food and the videos of the t-shirts and all the different patriotic 
attire and wear that people can submit and share. And I don't know if we talked about a live stream where we'd be live streaming maybe even the old concerts or the new concert. We can live stream a concert still and people can join in the chat and, and share different things and you can get different people submitting them dancing to the live stream and having a good time and partying. And even the people who were had the cars last year or any of the people um, who were a part of the parade, they can submit their pictures and it can be like a video parade where all the pictures and the cars and all the fun stuff is going along to keep people engaged and just having something positive to watch in their backyards or on TV on the 4th of July when they're spending time with their family since they, since they can't be there actually in person. Um, so I, I'm like Commissioner McCreary, just keeping hope alive at any way possible by putting on something for the people. So I, I look forward to what we come up with as a city. Thank you. That concludes that section. <laughs> And then uh, Chair Miller, the, the last two items are just receive and file reports uh, for the commission themselves. So there's uh, no action necessary. All righty, thank you. Uh, one other comment I have in regards to the wall of healing, that's gonna be in October, correct? Maybe, uh, yes, that is correct. <laughs> yeah, maybe depending on how, again, TBA, depending how things go in the future, is the wall of healing going to be put on the on the the front of the city lawn or the great lawn at city hall where's that going to be positioned at that is actually uh 300 uh feet or so uh long um it's actually part of it's uh, you know a memorial part of it's an art installation uh so we have actually blocked off santana park uh for that use um on the the top uh field there um for a, a perfect kind of like staging where you will have a beautiful city backdrop behind it um, our understanding is actually a very somber experience, um, very personal, um, but very powerful and very moving too. So it's going to be there for a week. It actually operates 24-7. Uh, um, we understand that, um, you know, some of the veterans, you know, they have their own things that they're going through um, as they look through this. And we hear a number of people actually come in the middle of the night, the late hours uh, to kind of, you know, take this in, process it, you know, look for different names. Um, but it's really, really cool, really interesting. Um, we're really excited about getting the community out there to see that um, and also engaging our schools uh, for this moment of living history that they can take part of. And along with that, with it being available 24 hours, we are recruiting vo uh, volunteers for that to help with all those range of just being there to if someone does, like as Jason mentioned, the organizers have said it can be a very emotional time for some people. So we need, we're going to be reigniting our effort, efforts to get volunteers on hand who maybe some of them are counselors who would like to volunteer some time to be there if someone needs just to have someone there to talk to or to refer them to some services that they that might help them. So it really ends up being a, a lot more of an impact then it's already an impact. I've seen the one at Washington, D.C. And so it, I think it's going to be, I'm, I'm really hopeful that we're going to be able to move forward with that. And so far we are, and we're going to plan on getting those volunteers recruited for that effort as well. Do you have a date on that? Yeah. You know what? It's escaping my brain at this very moment. It's the second week of October. Um, but if you go on the city's website, we actually have a full event page already created for that. We've had a little time on our hands. Um, as well as instructions um, for community members if they would like to volunteer. Um, we're also hoping to engage um, you know, military and or veteran groups um, throughout the community um, to be a part of this. This is really about engaging the community. So if anybody is interested in that, um, please take a look at um, the Corona website uh, under our uh, upcoming calendar events uh, in October, and it is listed there, as well as all the information for the event and how to get involved. My suggestion was what I wanted to bring up to that is with with uh, Commissioner McCreary is with Veterans Day and stuff kind of in November and things. Maybe we can do some sort of a concert at City Hall somewhere between that weekend or so. We can have a maybe a gathering for veterans and maybe a, a veterans concert at downtown City Hall in conjunctions with the Wall of Healing and kind of make it a, a whole weekend, a week event. 
since everything's going to be kind of shot through the whole summer and we're not going to get anything till late after Labor Day, possibly mm -hmm. being in October, hopefully things will be somewhat semi normal and we can maybe have a weekend of celebration and remembrance during that time. Mm -hmm. And that's incorporated. They encourage something to to kick it off, so to speak. And so what that looks like right now, um, I'm not sure what, what we'll be doing exactly, but there's bringing it in, setting it up, then having an event to, to let everyone know that it's, it's ready to be seen and visited. Maybe we it should talk to the Corona Symphony. Maybe we'd have some sort of a symphony that night, maybe something a little more classical, a little bit more classy. Mm -hmm. And here's our own community and we have our own symphony doing something, maybe even up in Santana, with symphony music, so more classy with that whole wall. Mm -hmm. Or some kind of patriotic music or patriotic yeah. concert as the kickoff. I love that maybe, idea. Maybe a miniature firework, you know, maybe not as grandioso, but maybe just something in pop and circumstance to set the whole mood of the whole week. Maybe like a Kiss tribute band kind of pyro thing. Well, I don't know about <laughs> that. I was saying keep it classy with the symphony. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so that is actually the week of October uh, 12th, uh, those festivities line up and then go into the weekend there. And that is actually going to be the same weekend as a uh, Halloween weekend. Um, so it's going to be pretty loaded there. Um, but I am always one for more uh, fun. So if we can figure out a way to uh, sneak a concert or some other activity in there or perhaps doing something um, as part of Veterans Day. Um, yeah, well, I love the idea of the that. symphony. Yeah, yeah that, that's very elegant. I like that. This is Christy Gavitt. I would like to let you know that somebody did email indicating that they wanted to speak, so we will be working to get them lined up. Okay, that's that's wonderful. Fantastic. So so while we get them lined up, is there any other comments from any of the commissioners that we'd like to bring forward at this time as we're moving forward waiting for our public comment? <laughs> Just to uh, highlight uh, our calendar of events, some events that are coming up here uh, just for our commissioners. Uh, May 12th, there's gonna be a workshop number one for the budget. And then there's gonna be another workshop on May 26th at 3.30, workshop number two, just so, so you guys are aware of that. And then uh, on June 17th, the city council is planning on adopting the revised budget for 2021 for, uh, 2021 2020-2021. Uh, so those are some upcoming events uh, that we could be aware of. Is that uh, caller called in yet or still working Not on it? Yet. Not okay. yet. Still working on it. All right. Still working on it. Just one. All right. Kathy, you got, you're working on it? Yes, I've sent her the link. Okay. Okay. So Commissioner Miller, you're standing out in front of the city hall right now, are you? Yeah, I am. It's it's a beautiful evening. It's about 72 degrees out, and uh, it's just wonderful. Since they've got the doors locked, I couldn't go inside, so I thought I'd just stand out front. I heard they're calling PD to find out why you're there. <laughs> well, I don't have a shaggy beard. If I was, then they'd probably pick me up and arrest me or something, but I'm, I'm looking pretty cleaned up right now. When, uh, when our meeting is over, I am, I'm actually heading out. I'm just going to head over there. As soon as the meeting's over, I'm going to head down, down and enjoy a little R&R. Uh, &R. <laughs> you, must, you must be on Star Trek. You're just time warping yourself all over the world there, aren't you? Oh, yeah, you know. Let's see here. Star Trek. Let's see here. I got something here for... Uh... Oh, there I am. I just got onto the Millennium Falcon there. I'm just uh, checking things hey, out. Hey, things are looking pretty sweet right now. I'm looking for Chewbacca, but I can't find him. Excuse me, commissioners. I have uh, Trisha Reyes on the line. Fantastic. Mrs. Reyes, please announce yourself and where you're from and go ahead and address the council or the, the commissioners, please. Commissioners, please. Hi. Um, 
My name is Trisha Reyes. I am the president for Corona Girls Softball Association. Yes. And um, I was just listening to um, the update for the parks and the fields. And uh, I didn't know how to get on the agenda because our team for um, Corona Girls Softball is going to start working on a plan. Um, understanding that, you know, we have to wait for the city to release the fields, but we, you know, our parents are very anxious to get back on the fields in some kind of way, even if there's things that we need to do to change the way that we obviously with the new requirements by the federal government, um, develop a plan that we can still play softball, but yet, um, utilize those restrict with restrictions that are given by the federal government and still be able to present some type of softball program for the girls in Corona. So um, we are, have gotten some information from USA softball. We've been looking at other organizations outside, outside of the state of California and things that they're coming up with so that softball can continue for girls um, in, you know, other States as well. So um, we would like to be, come before the, the commission just to present our, our um, ideas and how we could make it work, you know, by sanitizing, limiting our, the number of people that attend our games on the field. We play at Butterfield. So, you know, there's a lot of um, parents that come out there, but we, we really want to develop something that realistically will work in the the age that we're coming into. And so um, I just was kind of hoping that maybe we can present something to the city that would be considered once things are opened up for the, for the fields. Uh, I, I appreciate your time and comments. What I'd like to do, maybe we can put you on uh, next month's agenda if you've had some time to put some things together to give us a presentation that we can put on file as a recommendation, if you've really worked on something that might work for your organization, it might be able to work for other organizations around the country too. Yes. So if you and your group have, have taken some uh, time to uh, put some details together, uh, I don't see why our commission wouldn't take, you know, give you uh, you know, five, 10 minutes to give a presentation of, of the things that you put together to see if it would work. And we could hopefully, when 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 the timing is right here in our community, that we can lay out this type of a program. Yes, and that's what I'm looking for. I just want to be able to present something to the city that you can consider. And you know, once um, things start opening up, that you know, softball is something that can be considered ra sooner rather than later because we have a plan. That would be wonderful. Awesome. Any, any other comments from the other commissioners? For Mrs. Reyes? Yeah, I wanted to say thank you um, for calling in. And, um, you know, I appreciate the work that I know the sports organizations are looking forward to getting started. So I just wanted to just thank you for calling in and letting us know um, an update of what you have going on. And I, too, look forward to a report at a future meeting. Thank you. Ms. Reyes, just a, a quick analysis. If you're going to put something together, Bring some numbers, like how many how many participants that you're you're servicing, how many people are attend your things, and, and how your social distancing would work. Give an example of that. I think that would lend credence to the ability to say, hey, this is a this is a, a viable option. And the more numbers that you can give, we live in a data rich society right now. So the more data that you could give, the better that we could use it to enable us to move forward. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. That was in our plan. So we've already talked about um, the number of players that we usually usually have registered for a fall season, which would be upcoming in July, August. And so um, we've been talking about that. Like, you know, we have a certain number of fields available at Butterfield, but do we need to limit the number of games being played at certain times, maybe alternate um, game schedules so that there's only a certain amount of people at our fields. We're looking at that. So absolutely, we will be presenting some um, numbers. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Ms. Reyes. This is Michelle. I just wanted to say thank you for calling in, and I am sure that the city and the staff will be also able to give you guidelines 
that we're following along with what the parameters are for what's allowable at the parks and for team play. So I'm sure that between you and the staff allowing, uh, giving the commission information, that'll be helpful so we know where we're at. So we're not having team play when we shouldn't have team play and, and having and, and not missing out on team play when we could be having team play. So that, that we're on top of things. So I'm sure that we can work together and, and that'll, make, that'll make a difference. Absolutely, that'll be great. I appreciate you giving me the time to speak and um, I look forward to next month and, and we'll have something to present to you. And Ms. Gabbitt, you'll just, or uh, Ms. Reyes, you'll just need to get a hold of Ms. Uh, Christy Gabbitt in the uh, Parks and Rec Department so she can add you to the agenda for next month or, or our next designated meeting. Right okay. now, I don't know if we're having monthly meetings, but definitely at our next meeting, we'll put you on the agenda so then you can go ahead and give a presentation at that time. Perfect. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Ms. Ray, Ms. Reyes, this is Christy Gavitt. I will um, email you now so you have my contact and we'll stay in contact. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you, Ms. Gavitt. All righty. Let's see here. Moving right along here. We're at the point of our, our agenda that we have any uh, reports or comments from any of the commissioners. So I'd like to go ahead and start with uh, Commissioner Woods. Do you have any comments or uh, reports that you would like to give this evening? I just want to commend on the job that the city has done during this crisis, this pandemic, on making sure that the city is still clean and safe and that the citizens of Corona feel like they can trust the city even in these tough times. All right, anything else? All righty, let's uh, go to uh, Commissioner Wentworth, if you'd like to go ahead and have uh, any reports or comments at this time. Uh, my comments would be just that I'm praying for everybody to stay healthy and um, the staff is doing a tremendous job to try to turn some of our programs virtual and accessible to everybody. Um, I would just ask that the community be respectful of the rules that the city is trying to follow. We have still closed playgrounds and closed fields. And I know everybody's anxious to get back out there and playing and, and being active, but um, in the preservation of keeping everything, um, you know, there's a lot of caution tape, there's signs up and, and just keeping everything so it's not being used. These fields are, are, the sports teams are paying to help maintain these fields and when Clubs come out that shouldn't be playing on the fields and using them. They're wearing down the fields and another uh, organization is going to come behind you and pay for that damage. And so uh, I just like the community to be mindful that there's a reason these things are closed and when they can't open up, uh, we will get them opened up. And I really appreciate the softball league calling um, and trying to get that squared away and get the fields in use as soon as possible, but within this, the parameters that we have to deal with from the state. And that's that's it for my comments. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Commissioner Wentworth. Commissioner Almosi, if you'd like to go ahead and have any comments or reports. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to congratulate Abby and Jason for the commendable work that they've been doing through this through this whole environmental problems that we're encountering. You guys are not sitting on the sidelines and just watching. You're you're actually taking and engaging and moving forward with things. So when we do become open, you're going to be hitting the floor running and I, I commend you on that David the same thing with your 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 people and your leadership um, I think that you've maintained your staff I think the staff continues to be wanting to be engaged and that's a, a tribute to the way that you guys operate and uh, I applaud you and I hope that we can end up getting back to normal as soon as possible okay Vice Commissioner McCurry go right ahead I just wanted to echo my earlier sentiments, thanking um, the departments for all of their extra work that they've put into making these events as virtual as possible. And I look forward to hearing more about um, the city's ideas for um, the 4th of July celebration. And um, I'm happy to help in any way. All righty. Thank you very much, commissioners, commissioners, for all your reports and comments.
this evening. Uh, I, I have uh, nothing else to say but echoing uh, thank you for the great job that you guys continue to do, uh, moving our city in the right direction and getting us prepared for when the time comes that we can open back up uh, with the proper uh, with the proper uh, mandates uh, that are given to us by the uh, state and the county. Uh, at this time, uh, we're going to be bringing our meeting to a close. At this time, our, our next regular meeting is tentatively scheduled for Wednesday, June 10th at 6 o'clock right here uh, via Zoom. Uh, so we look forward to any of you to join us at that time. Uh, so at this time, be safe and be healthy and stay healthy. So thank you very much. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. All right, take care. Be Good safe, night. everybody. Good night. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Good night.